Hi, our friends. This is Mrs. McCumber. Today, I'm going to show you how to do a very simple but very striking watercolor relief project. You can see these are starfish in the ocean with shells, sea anemone, all sorts of shapes that you like. Also, if you can see, all these are outlined in yellow. So today you're going to need some sort of a yellow crayon. It could be a goldish crayon um, or bright yellow, or even if you had a light green, that would work fine too. Here are some other ideas. Whoops, upside down, sorry. These are simple turtles. You can always pause video and look at the basic shapes and then copy. I'm always in a hurry because I have to post this on YouTube. Now this is going to be a sideways view of a seahorse because my camera won't fit at all. But you can see this is Darling. It's got seaweed, simple seaweed behind it. I'm going to show you step by step how to draw the seahorse. And then you can use your own imagination to decide how to build your project. Now the whole thing is drawn with a crayon, a yellow crayon. Okay. We're using watercolor in the background. So we'll talk about materials in a minute. This is also a fish. This is student work. So you can see your scales, your texture shows up really nicely. Maybe I can zoom it for you. Shows up very nicely. You can see the yellow popping through. Now watercolor relief technique uses the wax and the crayon to push away the watercolor. So if you like this technique, it is really fun because as you work, you see your colors push away from the crayon because wax and water don't like each other. That's why you wax your car, it protects it. So what we're going to do, I'll draw on a small paper so that you can see the whole thing. But you could use a large piece of paper as the, these are. These are 12 by 14 construction paper. Of course, you could use watercolor. Watercolor, I mean watercolor paper, watercolor paper is really wonderful because the little pores, the holes in the paper hold the pigment. You need watercolors and you need paint brushes and you need something to rinse with. Okay, so we're not using a pencil. We're just going for it with the crayon. You want to push hard with the crayon so that you leave enough wax on the paper. Notice this kid colored in with crayon and you can see where the paint did not stick. So that is the effect we're looking for. When you push hard with your crayon, the paint pushes away and you get this very interesting um, pattern or this effect of the watercolor pushing away. So first off, let's get going. So to draw the seahorse, it is just kind of an S curve. And let me see if this shows up for you. I really hope it does. So it's kind of an S curve. You can always draw with your finger first. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see my entire paper. Okay. So we're going to make an S curve, but first this is going to be the top of its nose. So I'm going to push hard with my crayon. Can you see it? This is what concerns me. Let's see if this one show. I think, hmm. Let's see. I think if I use a smaller or a more yellow one, it's not going to show up. I'm just making a simple S curve like this. I think you can see, let's zoom in a little bit more. I think that's pretty good. I'll push very hard with my crayon. And then we're going to make the bottom of the nose and then come back to make the head. And then they have the big belly that comes through and then I'm gonna make a curly Q tail okay I think you can see that pretty well all right now next what we can do is make the eye and then we'll make the top knot and we can put some stripes in the top knot and then we'll do all the way down triangle pieces. And then down here, we're gonna make his fancy tail. It kind of goes like this. Now you can use any 
sort of design you want and you can use any shapes you want. I'm just doing the basic for you. Okay, and then let's continue some triangles here. Just have interesting places to paint. Some stripes on the tail. Curve them to make him look curvy. Oops, broke my crayon, pushing so hard. I'm going to make a curve here that comes down to make the belly have some interesting places. Okay. Let's put some diamonds. You could put some shapes or spots, whatever you like. Then in here, maybe I'll do a zigzag pattern. It's a fanciful. seahorse okay and then let's see we could do a simple fish if we wanted some fish in here just go rainbow line rainbow line and give it a head okay and how about some seaweed just make some curvy lines curvy lines and make them follow like a road and don't bump in, or excuse me, when you bump into your seahorse, go where you think it would come out at the bottom. Stop drawing so that you don't draw through your seahorse. You want your seaweed to be behind. All right, now we're going to move on and start to paint. Let me show you my color wheel. So colors here on the left side are colors of the sun. They are warm colors. Cool colors are colors of the water, the grass, cool things we're going to use warm and cool colors to our benefit here, okay? We're gonna to stick to warm colors on a body of the fish, or excuse me, the seahorse, and we're gonna to stick to the cool colors for the seaweed in the water. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to paint. Have my watercolors ready. And let me refer back to this. So you can see and pause this video what colors I use. So I use magenta and I painted in the spikes, painted in the stripes so that they're in a pattern, painted the belly. Oh, there's little stripes on the nose. I forgot to add those. Let's do that. It makes, when you curve some lines, it makes it look more three-dimensional and that's what you want to have it look like. Then notice how the seaweed is painted green and then the background is painted turquoise. I'm gonna paint very quickly, okay? Sticking to warm colors on the body. So warm colors are any of these. So I have yellow, okay? Yellow, which may not show up greatly. So I think what I'll do is put a little orange on the yellow to make yellow orange. Okay, not like in this brush, so I'm gonna switch. I have such tiny things to paint here. The nose, maybe I could make a stripe in the nose. Okay, maybe I could add stripes up here. Remember, I'm sticking to orange, yellow, red. Looking for patterns wherever I can. Painting quickly. Okay. So then I'm going to switch to, how do I have magenta? Magenta is over here on this one. Now you can paint right up next to your crayon, and it will help make the lines pop through the yellow. Now if you get too much paint, that's not going to happen. I'm going to leave the eye for later. I'm going to move on and make some patterns patterns. So each triangle I skip one, just stick with one color till you get all the way down. I'm going to pick up this idea over here. Remember, hold your brush like you hold a paintbrush. Going as fast as I can because I will run out of time and I don't want to make this a two part YouTube. Keep going. Paint, paint, paint as fast as I can. Use lots of water if you need it. Remember, watercolor won't work unless you put water. That's why they call it watercolor. So I'm going kind of fast, kind of sloppy, but I want you to get the idea quickly. Okay, and then I'll go with 
How about a magenta in the body? I'm holding my paintbrush like a pencil down towards the metal part. When I run out of water, I wet it again if it becomes scritchy scratchy, sloppy looking, not spreading. You don't want your watercolor to be too dark. You want your colors to be intense, but you don't want them to be too dark. How about just, maybe I end up with a goldish color. So paint here, sort of a brown this time, which is fine because it's a warm brown. I'm using warm colors. Okay. Oh, I didn't really do a pattern down there. I just noticed that's okay though. How about if I do my little triangles really quickly? Notice how the paint pushes away from the crayon. The technique is called watercolor relief. How about if I go quickly, paint, paint, paint. So you're filling in all of this. You can take your time. I'm in a hurry. Any place where I have quality control issues, I go back and I check. If your paints actually touch and they mix accidentally, no problem. All these colors look good. You'll notice your colors look, or your water, rinse water is going to look like fruit punch when you get done. That's just fine too. It makes the colors look rich and interesting. Notice how I can paint right over and it pushes that color away. You know what I have not used at all is red, regular red. Switch to regular red. Notice I have a pattern here. Okay. How about my little fish? Make him magenta. Notice I can push right over, paint the whole thing over, and look how it spreads. That's what you want to see. Maybe I'll do red pattern. I'm trying to go as fast as I can to finish this. And how about some regular yellow? Notice how you have colors touch sometimes. Look really nice because we're sticking with all warm colors. If they accidentally touch, it makes a really pretty picture. All right, I'm going to move on to a clean glass of water because now I'm doing cool colors. Okay, these two colors, if I use the same dirty water, I would end up with yucky colors here. So I'm going to use clean water, change water and use cool colors. First off, I'm going to use a bigger brush so I can cover more ground for you. I'm gonna paint green inside just like a street. And then move this over, get these done really quickly. You can see how it's pushing away. This is wet on wet technique. When you use a lot of water, you'll see in a minute. Okay. Now I'm going to go and paint the background. I'm water is is more believable in your pictures if you use a lot of water to make the picture. So I'm going to wet my paper first. And sadly, I do not have turquoise here at my house which is my favorite color. That's what I used before. I do have this bright blue though. And if, oh, it is turquoise. Never mind. I thought I didn't have any. Notice how quickly it spreads if I use lots of water. Don't be afraid to use lots of water. It's okay if it gets on your seahorse. That crayon part will just pop right through. Okay, I'm going as fast as I can so I don't run out of time. Now you would quality control and go back and take a little brush maybe and make sure there's no white spots showing while it's still wet. Oh, here's a spot here. And I need a little brush to do its eye. Okay, I think I'll make a turquoise eyeball. So I would go with my brush, my little brush, and get into all these little places where I did not get the white covered up in between the fish, get right up next to it, because you know that water is right up next to it. All right, I think that's good enough. You get the idea. I hope you enjoy your watercolor relief project. Remember, you can draw whatever creature you want, or it doesn't even have to be an ocean creature. The contrast between warm colors and cool colors is beautiful in this project, though. And the yellow crayon is what makes it really pop and stand out. 
Thank you. Hope you had a nice day. Bye-bye.